This video talks about medial inferior pontine syndrome. Now, it's very important whenever we're studying neurology to be able to relate one thing to the other because everything is connected to the other thing. Now, the one thing or the other syndrome that I want to connect medial inferior pontine syndrome with is a medial medullary syndrome. And there is a very specific reason for that. And my reasoning for connecting medial medullary syndrome with medial inferior pontine syndrome is that there are structures that runs from the medial, medial medulla to medial pons, which obviously makes sense. Now, what are the structures that is common between medial medulla and medial inferior pons? You have to keep in mind that it's in only in the medial inferior pons that the structures are uh, common between medial medulla. Now let's take a quick look at our medial medullary syndrome that I did in an earlier video. Now when we talked about medial medullary syndrome, we talked about corticospinal tract, medial lemniscus, and hypoglossal nerve. Now corticospinal tract and medial lemniscus both are found in me medial inferior pons. Hypoglossal nerve root is not found in medial inferior pons. And why is that? That's because uh, medial uh, medulla has cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12, and hypoglossal nerve nucleus or hypoglossal nerve is cranial nerve 12. So we would not find uh, cranial nerves which are not 9, 10, and 11, and 12 in the pons. So my question is what kind of cranial nerves are we going to find in pons? We're going to find five, six, seven, and eight. So whenever you're doing a question, if they show that the deficit is in any of those four cranial nerves, you automatically can jump to the conclusion that that is, um, that is pons that they're talking about. If they're talking about cranial nerves three and four, then they're talking about midbrain. Midbrain, and if they're talking about nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, they're talking about medulla. So, but now in this particular example, we are talking about medial inferior pons. Now, in medial inferior pons, which of these four cranial nerves is going to be present? And the cranial nerve that is going to be present in medial pons is going to be cranial nerve six. That's how you differentiate between other pontine syndrome. Now, now that we understand it, uh, let's look at the other structures that is going to be present in medial inferior pons. The corticospinal tract is coming from the, actually it's moving from the medial pons onto the medial medulla, so that is going to be uh, present. Medial lemniscus is also going to be present in medial pons. Hypoglossal nerve root is not going to be present and I just explained why. But the other structures that I talked about is the abducent nerve or cranial nerve 6 is going to be present in medial pons. So that is going to be there. And the, the two new structures that we have to talk about in medial inferior pontine syndrome is corticobulbar tract and middle, middle cerebellar peduncle. So now let's talk about uh, physical exam. What, how, how exactly are, is this patient with medial inferior pontine syndrome is going to represent in the, in the physical exam? Now, because their corticospinal tract is going to be affected, the contralateral side is going to have paralysis of the trunk and the extremities. Um, they are going to have uh, hemiparesis. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to see hyperreflexia. For corticobulbar tract, it's also going to be contralateral, um, and you are going to see weakness of the lower face. That is, uh, corticobulbar tract is responsible for motor, motor functions of the lower face. And for abducent nerve, that effect is going to be ipsilateral. You're going to see lateral rectus palsy, or if you tell them to move their eyes laterally, it's uh, the, the side that is affected, uh, or the ipsilateral side. Um, let's say in this case, the right side is the one that's affected, so the, the, the patient will not be able to move uh, their eyes laterally on the right side. 
So we talked about corticospinal tract, we talked about corticobulbar and abducent. Let's talk about medial lemniscus. And medial lemniscus effect is also going to be contralateral. So what are you going to see? You're going to see that the proprioception, uh, tactile sensation, vibratory sense, they're, they are not going to feel any of those, okay? But they will feel pain and temperature because that's spinothalamic and this does not deal with spinothalamic right? So they are not going to feel vibra vibration, tactile sense, and proprioception be on the contralateral side from the point of lesion. That's because, um, like I mentioned, uh, medial lemniscus is going to have second order neuron from the spinal cord, which, is, which crosses onto the contralateral side and moves up, up in the medulla, then onto the thalamus, and then onto the brain. Now that's why when there is a lesion in the medulla, the effect of medial lemniscus is going to be on the contralateral side. Now, last but not the le least is uh, the medial, the middle cerebellar peduncle. The effect of middle cerebellar peduncle is going to be ipsilateral, and there is going to be uh, ipsilateral limb and gait ataxia. Okay, so. The tracts that affects on the contralateral side is going to be corticospinal tract, medial lemniscus, and corticobulbar tract. Um, corticospinal tract was also contralateral in the middle, me middle medullary syndrome, and medial lemniscus also had a contralateral effect on the middle medullary syndrome. Corticobul corticobulbar tract is going to be um, contralateral um, in the middle inferior pontine syndrome. The ipsilateral tracts that is affected is going to be abducent um, and the middle cerebellar peduncle. Now, when you're reading a question again, the biggest clue to think about is which cranial nerve is it? Is it six, seven? Is it is it part of five, six, seven, and eight? We can automatically narrow the question to our pawns, and then okay, where which structures, which specific structures are related? Then you know if you do forget, oh, I probably don't remember all those five tracks that passed in the middle inferior pons. So in that case, you can kind of relate it to the middle medulla. Okay, there are three structures in middle medulla. Those structures have to be present in middle, medial inferior pons. So in that way, in, an, in a stressful exam um, condition, you can kind of um, sort it out. So that's why I made that connection earlier before. Last but not the least, uh, medial inferior pontine syndrome is supplied by the basilar artery. And basilar artery is made from the two vertebral arteries kind of joining together, making the basilar artery right in the middle of the pons.